All right, this video is fun. So uh, Mark Cuban went on Vivek Ramaswamy's podcast, and um, Cuban's an interesting guy. He's an interesting guy. There are times where I listen to him talk, and I think he's pretty reasonable. He's certainly better than most billionaires. He seems to have more humanity than most billionaires, which isn't saying much, but it's saying something. Um, one of the things I like that he did is, you know how all the drug companies rip everybody off massively? He decided to uh, basically do his own drug company, which is like cost plus 15%. So every drug is only marked up 15%, where you have from Big Pharma, a lot of drugs will be marked up like 3,000%, and they'll just be insane, and they're just price gouging everybody in sight. So I like that. It's a genuinely like ethical, decent thing that he did on that front. Um, and his politics are mixed, right? I think... He generally fancies himself sort of like an enlightened centrist. Uh, he said good things about some Republicans and good things about some Democrats. He's certainly not my flavor of politics. He's not a social Democrat, right? He's not a lefty. Um, but he's better than a lot of billionaires. Okay, so he goes on Vivek Ramaswamy's podcast. As you all know, Vivek's job is chief Trump ball coddler. And um, this is interesting because Mark Cuban basically explains to Vivek here, this is why I can't support Trump. And it's coming from a guy who liked him and supported him back in 2015. So let's see what he has to say, then we'll break it down. It's ethics. The man told Mike Pence not to certify the election. The man called the gover uh, state of Secretary of State, or was it governor, I forget, and asked for 11,072 votes. The man has stolen from more hardworking Americans. You were against Trump in 2016, any, though. You were against Trump in 2016. Right, but he, he was unethical then, and he's still unethical. And in 20, right. That's... Right. But that, that's the whole point. I actually started off supporting Donald and then I got to know him. Then. When did you support him? Like 2015. I was like, he's great. He's the you know, he's not a typical Stepford candidate. I thought that was a positive. I, th I would and then think, you I think got, that's a positive, right? A business guy. Yeah, I did. Pretty practical, but then I got to know him. Then I got to, Trump University, Trump Soho, stole four million dollars from a friend of mine that had sued to get it back. Mike Pence. You know, 40 you out of just, 44 people. Just take a look at the four years, because because each of these are just going to be separate sort of personal attack rabbit holes. Look at the country in the <laughs> four years. Personal attack rabbit holes. Uh, any legitimate criticism you bring up, these are just personal attack rabbit holes. What? He just brought up multi multiple instances of Trump committing fraud. If Biden committed fraud, you would laugh at the idea that this is just a personal attack rabbit hole. No, it's a substantive issue. Okay, here we go. The things that actually so, happened. So do you think the country, this, this, over, do you think the economy prospered and border crossing issues were far better under Donald Trump oh. under those four years than they've been no. in the last four years? You know, you disagree no, on that because, premise too. No, because if you look at border cars, what, what was Obama's nickname? The deporter in chief. Mm -hmm. If you look at actual crossings, they were lower under Obama. And when Obama came in, they were higher and he continued to lower them until the last couple months. On the economy, Obama took a fucked up economy and improved it. And Trump inherited that. Right. And actually, inflation grew by 25 percent under Trump over Obama. But the one certainty about the office of the president of the United States is the complete uncertainty that you have no idea what comes next. Would you agree with that? Yes. OK. And so in my mind, and I think a lot of people's minds that oppose Donald Trump is that you want somebody there that is educated on the world, but more importantly, just is ethical. Right. So that they make ethical decisions. You want somebody when there is no precedent. It's never happened before. You want somebody that has hired not people who are most loyal, like Tony Soprano might have done, but hired the very best people. And those people want to stay and work for them, not that they're loyal. You want somebody whose first inclination is not to do what's in their own best personal interest. So right? can I just you say, can't deny that's Donald Trump. I, I'm, I'm, it's just like a CEO of a company. Would you hire somebody that has a long history of stealing from people, See, of being unethical. I'll you you is, would is, not, and you know it. Is Donald Trump a perfect person? No, he's not. Am I a perfect no, we're person? Not talking about I'm not. Are you a perfect person? No, You're not. No, but you're, we're not talking about who's the actual best have president. Have you ever stolen money? Have have you, right I've never no, stolen money. Have you ever? Now. Either have I. And, and, right? Have you ever I, had a company? I have no evidence that, to say that Donald have Trump is either. No. Oh, I do for sure. Ask Barbara Corcoran, right? You know, she had to sue to get her money back. Ask anybody from Trump University. Ask people who um, bought condos in Trump Soho. Ask people from, you know, um, Trump Foundation that gave money there. Ask people who are giving money today and he's using that money for his legal fees. So, this isn't like a little discretion. This is a habit. Mark, I, That's I think that, why I, think that, I can't support him. Look, you were talking about ethics. You would not. Have you ever told any of your employees to short pay a vendor no. just to try to save some money? No. Either have I. He's killing them. And he's taking it back to basics, right? If you ask somebody like me why I don't support Trump, I'd give you a list of like 28 policies that he did that I thought were horrible for the country. He's not even going to that level. He's going one layer deeper than that. Just the layer of character, ethics, and then honestly, a plain description of crimes that Trump has committed.
So from the top, he says, look, just off the phone call that he made to the state of Georgia when the votes were coming in, and he said, find me 11,000 votes. I just need you to find me 11,000 votes. They rigged it. They stole it. I just need you to find me 11,000 votes. He says that alone. Done. Can't have it. Can't have it. Because that is him trying to steal the election. That is him trying to do a coup. Right. There's zero evidence that all the shit he said, oh, my God, uh, the vote count wasn't right. And they were dumping votes in the middle of the night. No, you idiot. We talked about this before the election happened, that there was this potential scenario called the red mirage. What that means is in the states where they count, and I think in most of the states they do this, they count the votes on the day first. It's going to look like Trump has a big lead. But then when they start counting the mail-in votes, which they do second, those cut heavily Democratic because Trump tells Republicans all the time, don't vote by mail. Okay, well, that has consequences. Then the mail-in votes come in, and it looks like Biden massively overtakes Trump. They look at that as evidence of the election being stolen. By the way, if the election was stolen, they went to 60 different court cases, more than 60 different court cases, and they lost virtually every one of them. Even Republican-appointed judges said there's nothing here. Even Trump-appointed judges has said there's nothing here. So at the end of the day, functionally what you have is a guy who's making a phone call and openly saying, steal the election for me. And he says on that alone, look, I can't do it. I can't do it. If you don't believe in uh, the peaceful transition of power, then that's an un-American belief, right? I showed you guys that clip. I think it was from a frontline documentary of every single presidential candidate who ended up losing. It's clip after clip after clip after clip of them saying... Look, I gave him my best shot, but I want to congratulate my opponent. My opponent won, and I'm here to help however I can, but I'm now going to step aside, right? And then all of them said that, and then you get to one Trump, and he's like, frankly, we won the election. Frankly, we won the election. And he doesn't do it. And it is true to look at that from just a pure character perspective. That guy's fucked up. That guy ain't right. Then he goes on to point out Trump University, massive fraud, had to pay out millions of dollars over that. This is interesting that he brings up, I personally know somebody who Trump stole $4 million from, and that person had to sue Trump to get the $4 million back. Yeah, that's going to make you feel some type of way about that guy, isn't it? I think it is. Um, then he brings up Mike Pence. Of course, he's talking about Trump trying to force Mike Pence to not certify the election, to do the right thing, Mike, do the right thing. You know, the people on January 6th chanting, hang Mike Pence. Trump, very famous, he was like, maybe they're right. I mean, look, Mike Pence didn't do the right thing. Um, and then when Vivek tries to bring it to policy, he brings up the border. Now, all of you guys know this fact because you watch this show all the time, but border crossing, even under Biden, they say, oh, Biden wants an open border. He has an open border. It's horrible. Guys, and this is something the left is not happy about, but Joe Biden deported more both as a raw number and as a percentage than Donald Trump did. So if these guys were being honest about the data or if they knew anything about the data, they'd be like, look, I, they would say, Vivek types would say, I agree with what Joe Biden did because he's very hard line on the border as well. Then, uh, you know, Cuban brings up this guy surrounds himself with yes men. And that's a real problem. It's absolutely a problem when you're somebody like Donald Trump and you just go based off your visceral gut instinct on everything and your instinct happens to be overwhelmingly authoritarian all the time. And then finally, he comes back to the Trump Foundation being a massive scam. Uh, the stiffing of workers is something people don't bring up nearly enough. I mean, there were a whole bunch of articles, a lot of deep reporting done on this, where they talked to people who were plumbers and electricians and did all sorts of stuff in the tr Trump casinos and Trump hotels. And a lot of these workers were just flat out stiffed. I remember a story that came out recently uh, talking about when Trump was doing The Apprentice, there was one time where they recorded at one of his golf courses and the architect of the golf course was there. And one of the people who worked on The Apprentice, one of like the producers or the, uh, you know, people who work with the camera crew or whatever, one of them talked to the architect of one of Trump's clubhouses, his golf clubhouses, and said, man, this place is beautiful. This is great. It's amazing that you did this. And the guy came out and said right off the bat, he admitted up front, like, I actually, I didn't get paid for this. He said, uh, Trump said half now, half later. He paid me the half up front. And then when I was finished, he didn't pay me the second half. And I realized, hey, I can go to court and try to sue him over this, but I might end up losing more money if I do that. Because it's a long legal battle, it will cost a lot of money. I will net have less money if I sue him, and maybe even if I win, I will still have less money. So I just let it go. I just, I was stiffed, right? This is the kind of guy we're dealing with, man. And the thing is, Vivek Ramaswamy is smart enough to know all this. He's smart enough to know all this. He's smart enough to know all the problems with Trump. But he, he uh, paved the lane for himself, to say the least. Right. He's he's one of the uh, he hopped on that MAGA bandwagon and he's riding it into uh, being famous 
and trying to set up his own political career. And so he's not willing to tell the truth. He cares more about the opportunism and the careerism and climbing that ladder than he does about being honest. And that says a lot. All right, guys, that's the show. I love you all very much. Everybody know the drill. Do me a favor. Uh, please click like. Please click subscribe. We're trying to get to that 10 million sub number, which will take a while, but you build it one at a time. Rome wasn't built in a day, as they say. And uh, thank you to everybody who supports the show on Patreon. If you'd like to help out, that link is below. Remember, I don't talk to any advertisers, so you guys really help build this show from the ground up. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Everybody have a great rest of your day. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.